Hello physics students and welcome to this video about conservation of momentum. Up until now we've only talked about momentum uh, regarding one object at a time. We are now going to consider the momentum of two or more objects that interact with each other. So we're going to look at collisions, what happens when objects push away from each other, how Newton's third law relates to the conservation of momentum, and what happens with forces in real collisions. Let's take a look at an example of a collision of two pool balls. Before the collision, before these two balls collide, we have ball A with some momentum, and we have ball B that has zero momentum. After the collision, uh, we have ball A and ball B. Their momentums have changed. We have ball A probably with a uh, lower velocity, with less momentum. We have ball B that is now at something greater than zero uh, for its velocity, so it has some momentum. The momentum of each ball has changed due to the collision. However, the total mo momentum does remain constant. Whatever momentum there was that, that uh, the ball A brought to this collision, the sum of the momentum of ball A and ball B after the collision will end up equaling whatever the sum of the momentum between those balls was before the co collision. And this is the law of conservation of momentum. It is that the total initial momentum will equal the total final momentum. And we can write that in the case of these balls as um, mass of the first ball times the velocity, the initial velocity of the first ball, plus the mass of the second ball times the velo initial velocity of the second ball is going to be equal to the mass of the first ball times the final velocity of that, plus the mass of the second ball times the final velocity of the second ball. Another way to state that would be that the total momentum of all objects interacting with one another remains constant, regardless of the nature of the forces between the objects. Now this is true only in a closed system. Uh, when the system contains other objects or other forces or other things are going on, it is no longer a closed system and we cannot consider this to be true. Also, you may wonder, what about friction? It's a really good question. Um, the cumulative effects of frictional forces during collisions are very small as long as the time period that we're considering is very, very short. Um, so we consider momentum to be conserved as long as the time interval is very short. If longer periods of time are considered, then frictional forces do end up becoming significant. So momentum is conserved in collisions. Let's take a look at a little example here. Let's call this uh, soccer ball A. And it has some initial velocity. And this here we'll call soccer ball B. And it is at rest. And let's say that we have a collision. We know that the mass times the velocity for ball A plus the mass times the velocity for ball B, which would be zero, uh, before the collision should equal the uh, mass times the velocity for ball A plus the mass times velocity for ball, v ball B after the collision. When we plug these numbers into the calculator, we indeed find that our momentums are equal. So our total momentum initial is equal to our total momentum final. Now let's take a look at what happens to momentum when objects push away from each other. We know that uh, when both skaters are standing facing each other and they're still, they have zero momentum. So the total for both skaters is zero as well. When the skaters push away from each other, however, they're going to have equal momentum, but in the opposite direction. So their total momentum is still going to be zero. We can write our um, velocity for the first skater 
is negative 2.5 because he's going this direction. And the velocity for the second skater will be a positive 3.0 because she is moving in that direction. And so our uh, total momentum will be zero. So momentum is conserved for objects pushing away from each other simply for the fact that uh, the momentum is equal but in opposite direction. So let's try a problem using our conservation of momentum formula. Let's say that a 76 kilogram boater, initially at rest in a stationary 45 kilogram boat, steps out of the boat and onto the dock. If this boater moves out of the boat with a velocity of 2.5 meters per second to the right, what is the final velocity of the boat? So let's draw a little diagram. So here's a situation. Next we can write down what we know. So we're going to call um, object 1 the boater and object 2 the boat. So object 1 will be uh, the, the mass of the boater is going to be 76 kilograms. Uh, the initial velocity is 0. His final velocity is 2.5 meters per second as he steps out of that boat. Um, and that will be going to the right, 2.5 meters per second to the right. The mass of the boat, we have 45 kilograms, and the uh, velocity of object number 2, the boat, the initial velocity is 0. So what will the final velocity be of the boat? Let's write down our equation for conservation of momentum. Here's our equation, and I'm omitting the commas just because my uh, pen doesn't do a very good job and it makes it look very messy on this screen. So I'm omitting the commas between the one and the little i there. Now, uh, let's go ahead and plug values into this equation. I know my mass, m M1 is 76 kilograms, uh, my V1 initial is 0, therefore this term will end up being 0. I know mass 2 is 45 kilograms, and my initial uh, velocity of this object is 0. That term will also be 0. Uh, so let's go ahead and plug in uh, mass 1 at 76 kilograms and V1 final is 2.5 meters per second. My uh, mass of 2, or my mass for object 2 is 45 kilograms and my uh, V2 final is what we would like to know. We don't know that. So when I go ahead and solve algebraically for V2 final, the velocity of my second object, which is the boat, the final velocity is negative 4.2 meters per second. What does that mean? Well, since I indicated um, the velocity of this object, the, the boater, going 2.5 meters per second, that was the positive direction. So I'm indicating that go movement to the right will be positive, therefore movement that is uh, a negative value will be to the left. So my answer is simply the final velocity of the boat would be 4.2 meters per second to the left. Now let's look at how Newton's third law leads to the conservation of momentum. We're going to take a look at two isolated bumper cars. Here are our little bumper cars. They have not collided yet. This is before the collision. And we are looking at V1i representing the velocity of this bumper car that has a mass of m1. And we have V2i representing the velocity of this bumper car uh, with a mass of m2. After they collide, their velocities are V1f and V2F, respectively. We can use the impulse momentum theorem right here to look at how we can describe the change in momentum of one of the bumper cars. If you'll recall this from um, one of our previous videos, let's apply this to bumper car one. This tells us that the force on bumper car one times the change in time uh, in which it occurred is going to be equal to the change in momentum, which is going to be uh, m1 v1 uh, final minus m1 v1 initial. 
we can write the same expression for our bumper car number two, uh, that the force on bumper car two times the time interval is equal to that change in momentum. Now if we draw these forces uh, into our diagram, F1 is the force that M2 exerts on M1 during the collision, and F2 is the force that M1 is exerting on M2 during the collision. Because the only forces acting in our collision are the forces that the two bumper cars are exerting on each other, Newton's third law, remember, tells us that the force on M1 is equal to an opposite the force on M2. So we can write that in our equation like this, um, or as an equation. Additionally, the two forces are acting over the same time interval. Delta T is the same. Uh, for both of those forces. So the force that M2 exerts on M1 multiplied by the time interval is going to be equal to the force that M1 exerts on M2 multiplied by that same time interval. You should recognize this as the impulse. The impulse on M1 is equal to and opposite the impulse on M2. So the relationship it, this relationship is true in every collision or interaction between two isolated objects. Now, how is this related to momentum? Well, remember that the impulse is equal to the change in momentum right here. So the impulse on M1 is equal to an opposite the impulse on M2. The change in momentum of, F1, of M1 is equal to an opposite the change in momentum of M2. So that means in every interaction between two isolated objects, the change in momentum of the first object is equal to and opposite the change in momentum of the second object. We can substitute specific uh, variables in for that change in momentum. And our equation would look like this. Basically, the change in momentum of object 1 equals the negative change in momentum of object 2. We can rearrange this also to give us a little bit more convenient form. And this should look very familiar to you because this is our law of conservation of momentum. One thing to mention is that in real collisions, forces are not always constant. And I'm going to try and sketch this out for you on this um, graph. We have a force versus time graph. And let's take our bumper cars from the last example and look at F1 and F2. So in a real collision, the forces vary in a very complicated way uh, throughout time. And if we look at the way they vary, they may vary like this. We have force 1 and force 2 varying somewhat uh, increasing a little bit, reaching a maximum, and then decreasing. However, what's important to note is that at all times, the forces of the two cars are equal and opposite in direction. So when solving impulse problems, just use the average force during the collision as the value for the force. If you want some advanced ideas, Try the conceptual challenge questions in your textbook. Try some of these ideas here. Or if you have other ideas, uh, other questions concerning any of these things, look into them. Come and show me your answers, and I look forward to seeing you in class.